Anyone? Anyone? Can I give you one minute? I'm coming back as admin. Salama, you can hear me now. I guess that's it. Well, anyway, we're going to take the result of everybody. And if anyone uh, interested to continue the debate, we willing to debate in one of you. That's it. It's over. It's over. He ran away. I'm sorry. He came back. Oh, he came back, he sure? He came back? Okay, brother uh, Afrasko, the mic is yours, read that to everybody, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, welcome back, Mr. Sergi McCain. We'll start again to that room. And first to please the uh, brothers, <coughs> and that the brothers who will translate, and please with Sam, uh, put down any privilege you have, okay, okay, brother Hussam is here, okay, he's back, and the, the brothers, bye, uh, brother Allah, please help me in undoting brother who translate, and our brother who is putting the time, okay, Mr. Sergi McKean, uh, you left the first time and you had 13 minutes. You had 13 minutes. It starts now. Please continue. Your mic, please. All right. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, sorry for that interruption. I'm having a few, few uh, modem problems. But I'm not sure exactly where I left off. I know I was talking for a little bit. Um, but in Acts chapter 9, we know that Ananias, Ananias receives a vision from the Lord, and the Lord, the, the Lord, uh, uh, calls Ananias to go and to lay his hands on, on Saul. And we, we read in Acts 9, in verse 17, Brother Saul, the Lord even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest hath sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. There is the testimony of Ananias, and actually the Lord himself, and of the writer of the book of Acts, Luke. So, so there's, there's plenty, plenty of testimony as far as uh, Saul being called by God to be an apostle. As a matter of fact, Peter testifies to this in Second Peter, in, the, in Peter's second epistle, in chapter 3, where we read in verse 16, an account, uh, excuse me, verse 15 into verse 16, an account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Now Peter is testifying that Paul is a beloved brother, that he has been given wisdom, and that he has written unto uh, the hearers of Peter's epistle. And it says in verse 16, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood, which they, their unlearned and unstable, rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Now Peter, uh, uh, an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, is testifying and witnessing and confirming that Paul is a man that is used by God, a human instrument, to bring prophecy, to, to uh, write down the scriptures. Peter puts Paul's epistles on the same level as the other scriptures. That's what he says here. Uh, Paul, as also in all his epistles, and, and some... Um, find what Paul has written to be hard to be understood. So, you know, I'm not surprised that some people think there are contradictions in the Bible. Some people think that Paul has...
as another kind of a gospel as compared to the gospel of Jesus because they, they think that the Bible's an easy book. They think that God wrote the Bible so anybody can understand it, and, and that's not true. It's just not true. God has written a very difficult book. He's written the Bible in a, in a way where it takes diligent study and, and, and much time reading the Bible in order to harmonize and, and to understand how statements fit together at, like pieces of a puzzle. The Bible is hard to be understood. That's why Jesus spoke in parables, in order to hide the truth, to veil the truth of the Word of God. He could have come right out and, and uh, said certain things uh, straightforwardly, but he chose to speak in parables. It, and that way, the hearers have to uh, dig into uh, what is being said, and they have to find out what is the spiritual meaning of the scripture. Now, there are many verses in the Bible, I would grant, where you can, where, where you can find apparent contradictions. And apparent contradiction is this. It is when you read two verses or more that do not seem to have any agreement, they do not fit together, and it looks like there's an error or a mistake. It's only an apparent contradiction because there is no real contradiction. The, the Bible is without error and without mistake. Whenever we read something, and it seems on, on the surface reading to um, not tie together, really what this means is that we have to spend more time in the Bible. We have to do more study. And and then we can uh, come to a proper understanding. And that's been my experience, as well as the experience of many true believers, that as we read the Bible and, and continue to study, that these apparent contradictions always clear up and fit together. Now, let's, um, let's look at um, the what Mr. Wiesam was saying in Acts 9-7 compared to Acts 22-9 about not hearing the voice. And it says in Acts 9, verse 7, And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And let's compare that to Acts 22. And verse 9, is that the verse... Yeah, verse 9. And they that were with me saw indeed the Lord of him that spake to me. Um, so here in one hand, in Acts 9 it says, hearing a voice. But in, in Acts 22, in verse, uh, verse 9 it says, they heard no 